then as we go on, it's sort of like none of this makes sense because even with the diet post show, for me, it was low in fat. The, like my calories weren't really high. So none of the, like the fatty liver sort of symptoms or markers lined up with the blood work. Yeah, so I, I, I think the only way only way it could have been like that if you were s secretly slurping a lot of high fructose corn yeah, syrup yeah. from coke you know like in the end of the day like oh, i have my one can of coke and a can of coke is actually like a gallon you know yeah. that it made sense but you know based on your body fat levels yeah I, I i couldn't really piece it together until you told me that you know it was diet related so of course when you want to win you want to put in you know everything you can to to accomplish that but sometimes you also realize in the back of your head like you know what maybe, maybe the drugs and the pds i mean we're both very health conscious so in the back of your head like i want to win and then the, the the angel on your shoulder is like yeah but you're ruining your health and your lipids are going to be skewed and and that kind of stuff and of course you do your blood work after the show and you're probably not as happy as you are uh, you know winning the show but yeah so obviously that from what I've shared on social media, I waited like my 12, 14 weeks post-show to get an accurate reflection of what my, everyone knows what their bloods look like on cycle or they should know what their bloods look yeah. like on cycle. <clears throat> and your bloods aren't really going to change a huge amount of variance on cycle versus off. So you're, you should know to expect what your bloods are like on cycle versus off. And so we get to this sort of like 14 week period post-show I'm expecting like all green green lights, green markers, one, two, five tests. I haven't been pushing anything, all health supplements. My mm. diet's been clean. My body fat was probably like still seven, eight percent in January. Yeah, you, still, sudden, you stayed quite lean after the show. Yeah, that was good yeah, to see. And then, and then mm. it came to the blood work and like what we've seen, my triglycerides were at 7.8 and my LDL couldn't be detected. And I'm, I'm messaging you and I'm messaging a couple other people going, that can't be right. That like, yeah. I'm literally looking at my trend and the blood work on cycle during prep had triglycerides at 0 0.9. And I'm thinking something's yeah. not, not right here with yeah. either I've given myself like really bad fatty liver disease with the prep that just has gone yeah. undiagnosed and silent, or we've got something seriously else wrong so obviously we we retested the blood work because i work through that that uk company the blood lab right and even mm -hmm. chris chris um who runs it was even like to me this can't be right this has to be an assay issue so we literally do three tests every second day for a week and the same result comes back and we're like okay well it's not an assay issue there's something seriously wrong in your body right. Right, and I told you, so maybe it's maybe it's time to do a liver ultrasound because this is so high, you know, all your metabolic markers literally look like you had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is yeah. weird when you're doing a prep because you're in such a caloric restrictive state. And, I mean, your your cycle was quite modest. I know on Instagram yeah. you posted, like, uh, apples and oranges, and, and uh, <laughs> right, because you didn't want to disclose what the cycle was. But I think you were, what, you were sub 1,000 milligrams? I think 700 12, milligrams in total. At the end, at the end, it was twelve hundred. So it was okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. I think it was three three hundred test, six hundred primo, and three hundred mast, and that that okay. was it. Obviously, at the That's, end, then yeah. there was very small amounts of orals as needed in sort of peak week. Mm. Other than that, you're you're looking at a very sort of moderate for for my body weight. My body weight was eighty eight kilos, so it's yeah. it's a relatively <clears throat> quote unquote moderate cycle. So. You're like looking at and going, the Q, the Q score that I sent you from my liver enzymes, even though they were low, was showing that there was a risk of fibrosis. And I'm thinking, all right, well, there, there has to be something <laughs> going on here at the liver. <laughs> right. And then, and then as we go on, it's sort of like none of this makes sense because even with the diet post show, for me, it was low in fat. The, like my calories weren't really high. So none of the, like the fatty liver sort of symptoms or markers lined up with the blood work. Yeah, I, so I, I think I, the only way only way it could have been like that if you were secretly slurping a lot of high fructose corn yeah, syrup yeah. from Coke, you know, like in the end of the day, like oh, I have my one can of Coke and a can of Coke is actually like a gallon, you know, yeah. that it made sense. But, you know, based on your body fat levels, yeah, I, I, I couldn't really piece it together until you told me that, you know, it was diet related. Yeah. And so like we we start going through it and I, then I thought it was SIBO or I thought it was mm -hmm. like a backlash because obviously 
in December, post show last year during prep, I had really bad SIBO that I just could not right. treat during the prep. So I was just managing it with diet. And then when it came to December, I then ran a course of rifaximin and uh, right. metrodonazole to kill it off. And that was successful. GI function was restored. We all verified that with GI stool testing. Mm. And so now I'm thinking, maybe is my like gut floor like paying me back for killing off loads of things? <laughs> and that was that was something that we talked about. That was SIBO, because right. then when I looked in the literature, there was things that elevate triglycerides in response to SIBO. And then that sort of mm. fed down another rabbit hole of H. pylori because one of the so right, and he, but guess, you checked it that, and there was there was nothing there, right? Yeah, with zero, the H. pylori. Zero antibodies, and and why we checked mm. that was one of the symptoms that I was having was a small bit of reflux, and to me, having a bit of reflux as a bodybuilder can either be a real silent symptom or it can be a silent deadly symptom. Um, when I said it to Chris right. about the reflux. <laughs> He, he said to me, no, this, this changes the, the sort of scenery of what we should be sort of looking at. So H. pylori was one. And then the second one was he said, I'm going to test your ATTA antibodies, so your anti-transglutaminase mm -hmm. antibodies for celiac disease. I was like, celiac? And he's like, yeah, I have, I have a suspicion that you're celiac. And I said to him, okay, well, when I've done my genetics, I, we do have that HLA-DOR gene that makes your immune system mm -hmm. more, um, I guess, sensitive is the right way to say it. So it presents antigens right. to your immune system a little more sensitively. And the ATTA came back sky high. It was like in the 3000s. He's like, we, they've actually sent it to another lab to verify that that result is oh, true. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so what ended up happening there was during my off season or whatever retirement, I was eating bits of bread. I was eating homemade pizzas. Like generally I wouldn't really eat a lot of gluten. I'd stick to rice based even more just for digestion and knowing that gluten based foods in the past did leave me a little bloated or tired, but you'd sort of expect that with like heavy carb meals, like heavy pizza and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so around the time of the first blood work, I had been eating quite a bit of bread and quite a bit of homemade pizza. So that was when the, the triglycerides detected it because any other time right. before that, when I had blood work, I was just eating my normal like rice based diet. So it was never being detected. Right. And then you don't see it off also because no, all of your metabolic markers are just normal because you don't get this weird inflammatory response and then, you know, everything kind of belt, building up and backing up in, in the intestinal tract. Because you, you, I've yeah. seen some pictures when you had SIBO where your stomach was a little bit out, right? Which you were able to control, you know, with proper nutrition. But of course, you know, like bread and pizza and, and that kind of dull stuff, that's not diet food. So it was yeah, probably yeah. already in the back of your head or going on internally. And then, of course, you know, post contest, you're like, okay, you know, the, the edge is off. You can relax a little bit, go out with family again, eat a little bit more freely. But, you know, with these kinds of inflammatory conditions, it seems to compound itself. Right? The more you eat, yeah. the worse it gets. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's sort of like, again, like fatty, non -fat, non alcohol fatty liver disease, it's silent. Like, there was no symptoms. There was, okay, maybe mm -hmm. looking back in hindsight, was it a couple of digestive symptoms? But, there was nothing to suggest that my triglycerides were at a level that I was like impending heart attack territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had, like, your blood was basically gravy yeah, for a bit. Yeah. And you know, that's scary because you're, you, you yeah. don't have any symptom that that's going on until you have a massive heart attack and it's sort of like scratching your head. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we do so, blood work, guys, right? As frequently uh, as we exactly. can, just to get you done. Because you, you caught it and resolved it, what, in just a couple of days, seven days? So, so we, when we realized it was celiac, we tested again. So obviously the gluten had been removed and it moved from seven down to four. And then we went sh like strict gluten free for 12 weeks and we retested there at the start of July and it was down to 0 0.9 again. So it yeah. really goes to show yeah. you your diet has such an impact to your blood. So even realizing that if you are, you know, following a strict sort of rice based diet, you might miss a gluten sensitivity if you don't eat it around the time your bloods yeah which is sort of what happened no, for me in the past no and then you know like like i usually do my blood work on the sunday morning of doing a refeed or cheat meal right so you go in like a week after the last refeed and then sometimes you see like wait wait a minute my c-reactive protein is a little bit elevated 
and 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 you know some other markers or liver enzymes are slightly higher or triglycerides are a little bit off and then you have to think well the whole week i was eating healthy food right but what about this last meal on sunday which i had basically eight hours the last uh, blood work right or or uh, what is it 132 hours before the blood work but it can actually last that long and sometimes what i what i discuss with clients sometimes they feel really really off the day after a refeed or cheat meal and it's actually because of the foods that they're eating they're having this acute inflammatory response from this one meal or two meals that they have over the weekend and then monday the workout suffers you know and, and you think was that the metformin was it the pizza Right? Or was it just like the lactose, right, from the cheese? And then you kind of have to piece it together. But, you know, it just pays and it shows that the older you get and after a couple of courses of performance enhancing drugs, you just got to eat super clean 24-7 because otherwise you just mess up yourself, you know?